Congresswoman, uh, last night Governor Perry tried to explain his position on the HPV mandate, and he said he'd actually been lobbied by a young woman who had cervical cancer. Does that make a difference uh, in, in this one issue? You know, it, the information actually came out that the woman who lobbied him about the vaccine, uh, actually who had cer cervical cancer, he actually signed the bill and signed the health care mandate for all 12-year-old girls in Texas before this woman supposedly lobbied him. So it, the story wasn't even right last night in the debate. What the governor did, quite specifically, is direct and mandate that all 12-year-old girls in Texas be required to have a shot against a sexually transmitted disease. That's not a decision that a governor should make. That's a decision that a girl's parents and the girl's doctor should make. That's also what the problem was. But in addition to that, we also know that Governor Perry received thousands of dollars from a drug company that made this drug. And Governor Perry essentially gave away the rights of the parents to this drug company. And the drug company gave thousands and thousands of dollars to Governor Perry for his uh, re-election campaign. And even worse, the drug company hired his former chief of staff to lobby the governor to make a financially favorable decision on behalf of the drug company. That's the situation. When, you're, when a politician is in a situation, they have political donors and then benefits are given from government, that's not a good business. So how would you characterize that? I mean, you know, he was putting it all on this uh, cancer victim. That's why he signed the law. I mean, based on what you know now, I mean, how would you characterize that response last night? Well, I would characterize that as wholly inaccurate because Governor Perry said that he, he passed the law because he had had a conversation with a, third, with a woman who was a cervical cancer, who was suffering with cervical cancer. But that didn't happen. He didn't have this conversation until after he passed the mandate. So unfortunately, he got his facts wrong. And do you think that was deliberate? Is this something, I mean, why would he do that? He surely, I mean, he said he was lobbied by her. Those were his choice of words. He was lobbied by her. And obviously, he couldn't have been lobbied if he'd already signed this uh, executive order uh, into effect. So clearly, that isn't so. So I don't know the thoughts and intentions of his heart, but this is a pattern that we've seen from the governor. This isn't the only time that we've seen what you call crony capitalism, when a politician does an action in response to political donations that they've received. He also has received over $17 million from donors. Those donors then were given political appointments on boards and commissions, or their spouses were. So there's a, a nexus there, as well as there's another donor that gave him $180,000. Six days before this donor received an appointment to serve on Texas Tech's board, that donor gave the governor $25,000. That isn't all. There's also a fund, an enterprise fund, that the governor set up in Texas. And out of that fund, he gave tax money, $35 million grant, to a company called Lexicon Genetics. There's a significant a number of donors on that board to Governor Perry. They were given a $35 million loan because Lexicon Genetics said they would create 5,000 jobs in Texas. Not only did they not create 5,000 jobs, they also cut an additional 20% of jobs. So the people of Texas certainly didn't get their money, money's worth, but this is a pattern that we've seen.